Before we begin Unit 5, here is the answer to the Unit 4 question. The best answer is choice D. For decades, efforts to coerce today's leaders into abandoning the inherent principles and values they have acquired during their lives have failed. Although corporate bottom lines and economic growth are expected to remain important goals in a sustainable society, it is the means of achievement that will need to be reimagined. The environmental professionals at Sustainable Education Associates trust that the next generation will manage the environment better than we did. However, they are convinced that the best path to a sustainable future is to empower educators to infuse sustainability education into their instruction in order to produce an eco-literate generation. Unit 5, The Environmental Infusion People care about things they consider to be relevant in their lives. Did you ever stop to think about what makes you care about something? If a topic is relevant, we usually take interest in it and don't mind investing time and energy toward understanding or learning about it. The concept of making curricular content relevant for students in order to stimulate learning and improve content retention and application is common sense. It's imperative that our students also become eco-literate, so why not use environmental science to enhance the relevance of what you're already teaching? Even at very young ages, our children are well aware that environmental issues are relevant to them and threaten their way of life. Older adolescents have even taken this awareness into the political arena. To make your curricular content more relevant, you may want to dedicate a lesson, topic, or entire unit when infusing environmental education into your instruction. However, most of the time, this can be accomplished in a few minutes or even seconds. The strategy works at every grade level and for every curriculum. Let's take a look at a few examples. Lisa's English class was progressing through their curricular unit on King Lear. At one point, she seemed to stop dead in her tracks and say, did you know that in Shakespeare's day, the average life expectancy was only 35 years? Her students weren't too surprised. Lisa is well known for her ability to find interesting ways of achieving the curricular goals. Lisa continued, did you know that people often gave their children the same first names because they did not expect them all to survive? Was Lisa veering off topic? Not at all. She was delving deeper into her core content and moving closer to curricular objectives. She explained that the plague had caused such a huge strain on the acting community that Shakespeare's company, the Kingsmen, were forced to close London's Globe Theatre. What may have seemed a divergence from the established curricular goal proved to be a powerful motivational spark as the students engaged in a higher order discussion pertaining to the influence that environmental conditions during his time may have had on Shakespeare's work. Students were heard citing scenes and discussing lines from several of his plays that they felt might have been included for these reasons. After a few minutes of highly engaged group discussion, the class moved on. Kyle assigned his social studies class the task of researching a prominent American figure that had a significant effect on the economic growth of our nation. He added one small addition to the assignment in order to make the topic a bit more relevant for his students. They were also required to reflect on any negative impacts. One of his students selected Nelson Rockefeller, portraying the man as a brilliant entrepreneur who brought oil to millions of Americans and paved the way for this resource to become the backbone of our country's infrastructure. A second student selected Henry Ford and argued that his company had a huge influence on developing and providing our society with one of the most useful tools ever conceived, the automobile. Both students clearly pointed out that these men were equally responsible for our country's current dependence on fossil fuels. The class discussed a hypothetical scenario in which history was altered so that non-renewable resources were never made readily accessible. The students debated if fossil fuels and the machines that rely on them would have ever been developed had this been the case. The class learned that it's possible to power cars using nothing more than renewable sources such as the sun, water, and compressed air. Can you imagine what our world would look like today had car manufacturers expended the same amount of time and effort in developing these types of vehicles? Kyle's students did. Unfortunately, we can't change our history, but that doesn't mean our future leaders can't learn from our mistakes. Here is a portion of Sarah's third grade mathematics lesson on fractions that demonstrates the infusion of environmental education into the instruction. To summarize, 
A fraction is a number expressed as a over b. It's a way to express a part or piece of a whole thing. A class of 10 students has four boys. What fraction is boys? Four boys over 10 students equals four over 10 or four tenths. Look at this picture. What do you see? It looks like dirty water to me. That's true. What made you say that? It looks polluted. What do you mean, polluted? There's something in the water that's not supposed to be there. You're right. And did you know that environmental scientists can tell each other how polluted water is using fractions? If the glass on the left has five parts of pollution for every one million parts of water, and the glass on the right has 100 parts of pollution for every one million parts of water, which one do you think is more polluted? I would say the one on the right. That's correct. And if the scientist knows what the pollutant is, for example lead, she would say that the glass on the left has five parts of lead per million parts of water, or five ppm lead. How long did that take Sarah? A few minutes? How long will her students remember it? Forever. See, it's a piece of cake. You see, once you have an understanding of the basic environmental concepts, Making it relevant to the curriculum is easy. Infusing environmental education into the instruction is a simple strategy that can be successfully implemented by any teacher at any grade level for any discipline. By making the curricular content relevant and more interesting to the student, content comprehension, retention, and problem-solving ability will be significantly enhanced. Okay, so what exactly do you need to know in order to begin? That's what we're going to cover next. Let's start with the concept of environmental science. Here is your question for Unit 5. The essential key to successful infusion of environmental education is Choice A. Making sustainability education fun. Choice B. Identifying proper infusion points and demonstrating relevance. Choice C. Spending significant time discussing a sustainability issue. Or Choice D rewriting the curriculum to incorporate sustainability into the instruction. The answer and explanation are provided at the beginning of Unit 6.